my experience in, in the past is, as I said, in sales and marketing and design. So anything that we believe that we can help, uh, our advertising is not lots and lots of photographs of property, like, like a shooting gallery. That to me is moronic. What we're about is educating the landlord really, because the landlord is a businessman. Businessmen want to get a competitive edge. So what we've tried to do with our advertising is to educate potential landlords, existing landlords, accidental landlords, and also my niche, which is military landlords. And our advertising explains to people what the process is and maybe highlights some of the key attributes of looking at Belvoir. It also talks about compliance and safe money and you know, being with a, a trade body. In an unregulated market, what people are looking for is a regulated island, island of, of success. Um, and that's what Belvoir provides, is knowledge, background, compliance, um, and using uh, the, tr the, uh, the, um, uh, the trade bodies such as the um, national approved letting scheme and the property ombudsman, um, safe money, those are the kind of things, those benchmarks in your window aren't just a benchmark in a window. They are proper beacons to tenants and landlords alike that this is a business that's serious and really cares. If any landlord comes into our office and says, what are your prices? I say, on what? What, what? what are you talking about, price? You haven't even found out what service I can give you yet. So why would you buy a BMW when you can buy a Ford Escort? Well, I buy the BMW because the brand, because I know I'm going to get a fantastic product, and because that's what I want. Now, if a landlord comes into me and says, I want to be, I want the cheapest price, I say, I'm not your guy. I am not going to cut my price. Because if I cut my price, my service will diminish. And if you want poor service, you're not going to get poor service from my company. So no, absolutely not. The most important thing is connecting with people who have either property, who are interested in investing in property, or who knows somebody who's interested. Um, and again, it comes back to the marketing strategy of baiting, baiting fishing hooks. The more uh, fish hooks you've got, the more opportunity you've got to network using um, the internet, using um, the local community. We sponsor now a under nines football team in Telford with the Belvoir brand, of course, emblazoned across their chest on as you would like to hear, Barcelona kit, which is a bit of a misnomer, but anyway. Um, we also um, collect for our local charity, uh, Help for Heroes, uh, and we hope to be uh, able to support Battleback this year as well. Um, and also Macmillan at Cancer Care as well. Um, so what we're trying to do is to put back into the community, and a, a part of that is about getting the brand name known, of course. But it's also making sure that people who want service, they want a property, they want to live or to work or to, to, to have their family in a property, that they should come and talk to us as much as go and talk to anybody else. There are some other good people around, but if they come and talk to us, ordinarily most people will actually choose Belvoir. We convert 85% of all landlords who come in and they're looking at multi-agency or other agents, we convert 85% of those people to come and work with Belvoir. Within five months, and that was about the end of May, um, we were turning over around about 6,000, just over 6,000 pounds, I think, which in itself doesn't sound a huge amount, but that was from a standing start of naught from the 1st of January. Um, and then, uh, um, so the most important thing was tight control on costs, a good sensible budget. Um, we weren't taking out a huge amount because we were investing in. Um, when you start up from nothing, you have to invest a lot of money up front. So there was four, five, six months worth of marketing that we had to spend to realize it. And then if I'm really honest, we chased every single lead. If a landlord rang, we were back within 10 minutes. And sometimes, don't forget, I was away with the army three, four days a week. 
Um, and I'd be phoning them from Edinburgh or Catterick or down at, from Aldershot or wherever. And we didn't let anything get past us. Uh, the team, Sally, was understanding and learning Winman, driving that side forward. Um, and we then tried to make sure that we were getting a good set of, 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 of contractors. Um, but in the main, it was tight control on costs, knowing what we were going to spend, and then driving the revenue. We had to hit our revenue figures. So, um, of course, as soon as you've broken even, then what you want to do is set the, set the, the bar higher. Um, and we achieved just over £74,000 worth of turnover in our first year. Was failure an option? No. Didn't have a plan B for failure. Um, we had measures of success. The British Army is well known for its tactical withdrawal from Dunkirk. It was a defeat, but we call it a tactical withdrawal. So from our perspective, uh, failure just wasn't there. Um, we had to hit big numbers. We wanted to. Um, it was, we put a certain amount of equity from our property in, into the business. Uh, that was on a loan with the bank. So no, failure wasn't an option, full stop.